Hello, and welcome to the channel. My friend Harry and Gladive likes to refer to the 2020s as the clown decade. Given what I'm about to tell you, I'm starting to see why. January the 6th in recent years has become synonymous with the protests that took place on Capitol Hill following the 2020 US presidential election. But for the city of Newport News, Virginia, the 6th of January 2023 has a more closer, dark turn. At Richneck Elementary School, 25-year-old school teacher Abigail Zwerna was teaching her class when she was shot by one of her six-year-old students. After being shot, she incredibly ensured that the rest of her class were safely removed from the classroom, screaming at them to leave before making her way to the school administration office to call for help. A grandmother who was at the school to pick up their grandchild told the New York Times that she saw Abigail in the doorway of the school's front office. She witnessed the wounded teacher request that 911 be called before fainting. Police would receive the call at approximately 2pm and would arrive within five minutes. Upon entering the classroom, they found the student being restrained by another school employee. They located the gun, a 9mm Taurus pistol near his desk, as well as his backpack, mobile phone and one shell casing. While the student was detained, Abigail Zwerner was rushed to hospital for a single gunshot wound to her hand and upper chest. When she arrived, she was understood to be in a critical condition. However, more recent news suggests that she is thankfully now in a stable condition. Newport News Police Chief Steve Drew gave reporters an update on the investigation on the 9th of January 2023. In the press conference, he described the shooting as an unprecedented situation, describing the events that Friday as being, quote, hard for all of us. He confirmed that the day after the incident, he was able to meet with both Abigail's family and Abigail herself. Describing Abigail as both a trooper and a hero, he said the first question she asked him was, do you know how my students are? He then went on to discuss the timeline of the events and the investigation thus far, stressing that there was still much to learn, but he was able to provide the following information. After removing the child from the classroom and placing him into a police car, classrooms and hallways were evacuated for safety and security reasons. Police Chief Drew explained that while Abigail was teaching her class, the six-year-old child produced the 9mm weapon, pointed the firearm at her, and fired one round. He stated that there was no physical struggle or fight. Regarding the evacuation of the classroom, Police Chief Drew explained after reviewing surveillance footage from the school, approximately 17 to 20 children were seen running from the classroom to other classrooms. Abigail, he confirmed, was the last person out of the classroom. He also confirmed she had stopped and turned back to make sure all the children had evacuated safely. The parents of the six-year-old child, who has not been named, were contacted by police and asked to meet them at the police headquarters. Upon arriving, the child and mother were interviewed by police. The gun used to shoot Abigail was a legally owned firearm registered to the child's mother. While it's not clear on how the child gained access to the weapon, Police Chief Drew confirmed that the child had obtained the weapon and placed it into his own backpack before bringing it to school. Police contacted Child Protective Services, Human Services and the Community Service Board, who the chief said address mental and behavioural health, to seek guidance on how best to proceed, given the unique situation they were facing. Following these conversations, an emergency custody order was initiated by detectives and the six-year-old was transported to a local hospital for evaluation. He reiterated that the shooting was not accidental, but intentional. Police chiefs have also confirmed that there was more than one round in the handgun. The motive for the attack is still under investigation. While Abigail continues to recover, a community vigil was held for her on the 9th of January, and a GoFundMe was set up by Abigail's sister, Hannah, to help with future living expenses as she continues to recover. I've left a link in the description should you wish to donate. Thank you for watching. If you found this case informative, 
please consider hitting the like button and sharing the story with anyone you know who shares an interest in true crime content. It's worth bearing in mind that this is still very much a developing story, so you can expect updates as and when these are received. Being from rainy old England, I'm not ingrained into the gun culture that America appears to have, and this isn't a commentary on the topic in any way, shape or form. I think this is a story that would understandably have both sides of that argument shocked and wanting answers. If you want to support the channel in other ways, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more true crime content as is released. You may also wish to consider supporting me on Patreon or by becoming a channel member, where you'll receive shoutouts at the end of each video and exclusive content. Speaking of which, a special thank you to my current channel members, Needle and Fur, The Alabastard, Mr. Gently Benevolent, Amanda, Krista Lands, Omniblast, and Shamu Dog Smith. Thank you for supporting the channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye for now.